Hello everyone and welcome to another out of the box challenge. After dusting off my Pokemon sword cartridge, I decided I wanted to do a playthrough that was difficult as my first one was quite easy. Can you beat Pokemon Sword with only a Why Not? Well, the answer to that is probably yes. That's why I decided to go further and do it without battle items or Dynamaxing. There are a couple of ways to set this up, but I wanted to run the entire game with only a Why Not, so I used PKNX to change one of the starters to Why Not. The game will still think we picked Grookey, so our rival and the champion's Pokemon is decided by which slot is overwritten. With our single Pokemon now available as a starter, let's begin. After picking our starter, we have to fight Hop, where we already have a problem. Since we didn't get to choose the moves that Why Not has initially, we're stuck without being able to deal damage. Luckily, it's not required for us to win, so we can still progress even if we lose. Speaking of moves, once you get past the mandatory plot and cutscenes, you can finally change Why Not's moves at the Poke Center. Why not is quite limited, only having 8 available to it. Additionally, two of those don't do anything, limiting us even further. With only 6 possible choices and only being able to deal damage after taking damage, we'll need to get creative for a lot of battles. Once on Route 2, we encounter a trainer who presents a problem I hadn't considered. Multiple stat drops. Youngster Jake wants to tell Whip until he can one-hit KO you, which keeps us from doing damage. Luckily, Why Not gets access to Charm and Encore so we can stall him out, or force him into a loop of using Tackle until we can take him down. The rest of the route is quite easy if you grab a level or two from the Wealth Pokemon, with none of the other trainers presenting a problem. Once at the end, you have to fight Hop again, and I honestly forgot about this encounter. I lost due to not having enough health to take down three Pokemon, though with another level or two, victory is certainly feasible. Whether you win or lose, you're allowed to continue, and our next stop is the wild area. But we can't use battle items, held items are acceptable. It just so happens that in the now accessible giant seed area, a conveniently placed leftovers exist, which will be what we give to Why Not for almost the entire rest of the run. While we could spend more time in the wild area and grind up levels, it's actually detrimental to outlevel by a significant amount. You see, Counter and Mirror Coat reflect double the damage we take, and if we don't take enough damage, in longer battles we'll be forced to struggle. In Sword and Shield, struggling takes 25% of your health, making a lot of fights vastly more difficult or straight up impossible. The next waypoint for us is Modestoke, where we get lots of dialogue and learn about the gym challenge. After a chunk of talking, we make our way to the hotel and meet Team Yell, who interrupts us, where the realization finally set in. I picked a game with a team who only uses dark type Pokemon to do a why not run on. Absolutely brilliant choice. Luckily for me, even though why not was weak to them, at this level they didn't know many or any dark type moves and the encounters proved pretty easy. At least until I had to do a double battle with Hop. Good, this should do a chunk of damage. I don't know if it'll take it out, but it should be close if not. Oh shoot, so Mirror Code doesn't work on Dark types. Even though it didn't change the victor of this battle, this would prove to be a big annoyance over the course of the run. After clearing the double battle, the game runs you through some more talking until finally giving you the option to head towards your first gym. But of course our rival can't resist from stopping us for another fight. I lost the first attempt on this encounter. Why not was only level 10 and a valid strat would certainly be to level up before attempting, but that's boring. Instead of that, I caught the Rookadi using Leer and capitalized on it by trapping it into Encore. This gave some time to regenerate HP with leftovers. The reason I lost the first fight was just not having enough total HP to deal with three separate Pokemon. But with the extra Why Not got from the Encore trap, our total is high enough to take out Hop's full team. Though being level 11 instead of 10 likely at least helped. The route leaving Motostoke didn't have many noteworthy encounters, but there was one. Schoolgirl Hannah had a Pancham that knew Circle Throw. If you're not familiar with priorities in Pokemon, basically all moves have a priority from negative 7 to positive 5. Normally your move order is determined by your speed, but if you have a higher priority move than your opponent, you go before them. The alternate is also true. Circle Throw has a negative 6 priority while Counter has negative 5, meaning we can't actually counter Circle Throw. However, the AI didn't really play optimally, so I still defeated her on my first attempt. Galar Mine number 1 is the next thing on the map, and once again the encounters here aren't very noteworthy. Besides a few stray critical hits taking me out, the trainers mostly only required clicking counter or mirror coat. Even bead proved to be quite easy. Once you're out of the mine, turf field comes into view, leading us to gym number one. If you're not familiar with sword and shield, gyms have a small challenge you need to complete before you fight the gym leader. For turf field, it requires us to herd Wulu and fight the occasional trainer. 
The fights are pretty straightforward, but if you get poisoned early and they opt for status moves, it might give you some trouble. Once the gym challenge is clear, I was set to tackle gym leader number one. His first Pokemon is Gossifleur, and we have a new issue. Gossifleur knows physical and special attack moves, so in order to deal damage back, we need to predict which one he'll choose. Is what I would say if I didn't have Encore. Since why not contrap Gossifleur into using the same move, there's no chance to the counter or mirror coat decision. The only other Pokemon Milo has is Eldegoss, where we fight our first Dynamax Pokemon. By the rules, we can't Dynamax, and I hadn't tested if counter or mirror coat would work beforehand, so this was a test of how bad the rest of the run will be. I mean, that kind of sums up the entire challenge. No you. This is going to do a lot. I honestly don't think it's going to KO, which is unfortunate because we won't take another hit. Oh, that's so bad. It does not work. It does not work. Um... Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Wait, hold on. I just mispredicted what move he would pick. Just like with Gossifleur, we also had to predict whether the max moves are special or physical, and Encore doesn't work on Dynamax Pokemon. I took Milo down on my second try, but for future gem leaders, it had become more critical to get these predictions correct. With the first badge secured, we can head towards the second gym. This is where the first real showstopper of the run appears. Team Yell is blocking a bridge we need to cross, and this encounter is a lot different than what we've done so far. Not only are we fighting Pokemon we are weak to, we have to beat two trainers in a row without being able to heal in between. Additionally, the first trainer has two Pokemon and uses Snarl, so we can't Maricote. This means in fight one, I have to stall a Thievil out. As if that wasn't already hard enough, the second trainer presents Why Not's absolute bane. Sableye. You see, Sableye is Ghost and Dark. That means that not only will Miracote not work against it, Counter also can't touch it. In other words, we have no way to deal damage to it directly. After enough attempts to realize that I wasn't going to win, me and Chat started coming up with other ideas. Since everything was dark, I could drop Miracote for Amnesia. Reaching a specific HP number, I could get another 1 HP of recovery from leftovers each turn. I could try a berry or rocky helmet and so on. The rocky helmet strategy seemed promising, and after checking where to find one, I shot off to the Isle of Armor. Completing the story up to the point I could get a rocky helmet was pretty easy, and after picking it up, I immediately went back to the encounter again, where I continued to lose over and over. However, rocky helmet did prove to give us consistent damage against Tableye. After a lot of defeats, I eventually had leveled up a few times and got an attempt where I was able to pull through. Every Pokemon in this encounter, you want to minimize the amount of damage you take via Charm, Amnesia, and Encore. While you can get a little damage from Counter on the Zigzagoon, the strat for the whole sequence is to keep every digit of HP you can. After over 20 losses, Sableye went down, netting us the Rotom Bike and the ability to move forward. To the middle of the bridge, at least. Hop really loves battling, you see, and once again he wants to tango. While this encounter isn't particularly difficult, it does present a couple of new things we haven't run into yet. For starters, while we can't use battle items, our opponents can, and Hop happens to have a super potion. The second new thing we encounter is trapping moves. His Drizzle knows Bind, which deals an eighth of Why Not's HP each turn we have trapped. This does more damage than we heal with leftovers. For this fight, I found it easier to run Rocky Helmet and manage to claim victory on the third try. The Wulu should click Double Kick, so trap it with Encore on turn one. Counter does not reflect the total of a multi-hit move like Double Kick. Instead, it only doubles the damage of the last hit. Rocky Helmet, on the other hand, does damage for both hits. Corvey Squire took itself out by using Fairy Attack, invoking the Wrath of Rocky Helmet. Drizzle was another case of coin flipping to determine whether it would use a special or physical move. And once again, Encore makes that prediction easy, letting Why Not 2-hit KO Drizzle with Miracote. After a few hours of struggling through Route 5, we can move to the second gym. As with the previous gym, there's a challenge that must be cleared before we can fight the gym leader. And just like the previous gym, I managed to clear the entirety of it without a retry or going to the Poke Center. As for Nessa, this was a fight I definitely underestimated. She has three Pokemon, and the main issue is the amount of damage Why Not needs to tank. Goldeen is her first Pokemon and quite easy to deal with. Pokemon 2 is an Arascuta, which will deal more damage than Leftovers heals, even if I use Charm to drop its attack as far as possible. Additionally, the Arascuta will flinch us with Bite frequently, and it has the potential to use Whirlpool, a trapping move that deals percentage-based HP. Taking Arascuta down isn't the issue. It's the fact that afterwards I have to deal with Dreadnought's Max Form, who just happens to know Max Darkness, which Why Not is weak to. 
At this point, I already felt a bit overleveled and didn't want to level up much more if possible. If you're not familiar with how Pokemon get their stats, there are three factors that determine what numbers you have. A Pokemon species, its IVs, and its EVs, effort values. I won't explain the first two since we can't manipulate them, but EVs we can control. You can earn effort values by using feathers or battling Pokemon. Each Pokemon you fight will give 1-3 to three points in a specific stat. But what happens if you have too many? Each Pokemon can only have a total of 510, and there's a cap on how many can be earned for each stat. If you've maxed out your EVs, you can use certain berries that will get rid of 10 points for each. After running some calculations on what stats I would need to beat Nessa, I camped out on Route 1 fighting a bunch of Squabbits and Rukadis until Why Not was ready to get back into the ring. The better stats certainly helped, but I still went through a chunk of losses before finding a winning strat. To start, use Amnesia to max your special defense while the Goldeen is out. The goal here is to make the Goldeen deal less damage than Leftovers recovers each turn. It's important to use Amnesia first though, since the AI will tend to make the decision between special or physical attacks based on which does more damage to you. Using this strat, you should be able to make it to Ariskuda with full health. Immediately charm it until its attack is at a minimum. I did have some losses at this step due to getting flinched so many times by Bite, but in this attempt I managed to get all the charms up before getting flinched. Shout out to Selux here for helping me run Calx to find a balance of HP and defense EVs that kept Why Not alive through two max darknesses. Once you've healed up, counters should make quick work of the Dreadnought as long as Why Not survives, earning badge number two. The path to number three includes another fight with Bead and a trip through Galar Mine number two. The trainers here don't really present any problems until we run into Team Yelliga. This time, Hop wants to do a double battle with us and doesn't let us through unless we fight alongside him. This battle I've retried a lot. See, the opponent starts out with a Thievul and Lanoon. Counter and Miracle only tries to reflect the last move that hit Why Not. Due to Thievul being slower, there's no way to start dealing damage to the opponent. Additionally, Hop just loves to click status moves and not deal any damage on his own. After a few hours of retries, I'd built up a strategy in another level letting me claim a win. To start, charm the Lanoon so that its damage on Why Not is lower and Hop's Pokemon will live longer. After the Lanoon is no longer a threat, Amnesia up so that Snarl's damage is minimized. When the Lanoon goes down, there's a bit of a coin flip on whether the Pancham will attack. Counter and Amnesia are the only options worth using, so hope you get the reads correct with Counter. The idea is mostly to let Hop take down the opposing side, keeping our side alive with Charm and Amnesia and get any chip damage in where possible. There's still a major luck component, but with enough retries they'll go down, clearing all roadblockers back to Modestoke. Before we can challenge the gym, the game wants us to fight Marnie, an encounter that didn't really give much trouble. The other prerequisite is once again the gym challenge, and this one's a bit different. The game gives us an option of catching Pokemon or KOing them. Naturally, we'll KO them. No individual encounter proved difficult, but we do have to double battle against the wild Pokemon. Sometimes the battle partner will attack Why Not instead of the wild Pokemon, which can lead to some blackouts. Luckily, you don't have to restart the whole challenge, only continue from where you were. Completing Gym Challenge 3 unlocks the right to challenge Kabu. I honestly hadn't expected to hit so many difficult fights this early in the challenge, and really didn't expect Kabu to be such a difficult encounter either. My first attempt, I lost horrendously without taking down a single Pokemon. Kabu tries to use Will-O-Wisp if possible, and the burn will negate the healing Why Not gets from leftovers. Additionally, he can use binding moves like Fire Spin and outsped me with every Pokemon on his team. This fight really stumped me at first, and I wasn't sure how to approach it. Add some ideas like maxing Why Not to level 100 and attacking via struggle, but even then I couldn't take out the Scorch without losing. After going back to the drawing board, Selux offered to help with some testing and strategizing on Pokemon Showdown. If you've never used Showdown before, it's an online battle simulator that allows you to set up specific scenarios, like this gym battle. After importing Kabu's team, we were able to create a winning strategy. Why Not learn Safeguard, and this was the first key. If I could prevent Kabu from burning Why Not, I could win. When I mentioned earlier that a Pokemon's stats are made up of three values, I actually left one out. A fourth influence, called a Pokemon's nature, can also affect two of their stats. Generally, natures will increase one stat while lowering another. One at's nature is determined when selecting it in the beginning of the game. However, there are items called mints that can change a Pokemon's nature. The issue is you would normally get them from spending battle points that you can only get from in-game events or online competitive play. However, it is possible to find mints laying on the ground in certain areas. This doesn't make it easy though, as there's a few issues with this method. One, the spawn rates for mints is low. Second, we can't control what mint we'll get, and I specifically needed the naive mint. Additionally, once you pick up an item off the ground, nothing new spawns until the next day. 
While I did make it a bit easier by saving the game, advancing the date of my Switch, and then reloading, I couldn't approve the odds of the mint being a naive mint specifically. I had horrendous luck with this step and spent multiple hours looking for a mint, and got almost every one of the other 24 mints before finding the naive one I needed. This wasn't the end though, as I still needed to get specific EVs to outspeed and survive the battle. So I spent another 4 hours wiping out most of the Rugadies and Squavits on the first route until my stats hit what I was looking for. Finally, it was time to beat Kabu. After over 10 hours of prep work in the game, why not had become fast enough to outspeed all of Kabu's team. The battle would start with a safeguard to prevent getting burned. As long as safeguard stays up, you can clear Ninetales easily, but Arcanine is another matter. Safeguard will go down right as Ninetales fainted, but I had just enough speed to set it up again, outspeeding Arcanine by a single point. However, I would only get one safeguard as Arcanine had agility and outsped me after his first turn on the field. His move of choice for attacking was Bite, and required two counters to take him out. This would have been fine if my luck wasn't so terrible. I lost quite a few times due to getting flinched more than once in those three turns of safeguard and then getting burned since it was faster. After multiple attempts, I did get through Arcanine though, and Scorch was the last thing to deal with. Its max move is super effective, but I had raised my stats enough to survive one hit and deal just enough damage back to Oko it. Finally, Kabu was defeated, and it only took 30 hours of gameplay to beat three gems. The route to the fourth gym has us going through the next half of the wild area and another route. The trainers you encounter on the way here are pretty easy, not requiring any special strategy. Of course, Hop has to get our way again, and while not as challenging as other encounters, did still prove to be difficult. I didn't find a particular Pokemon or move in this battle difficult, but rather that the first few Pokemon can deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time. This would mean that by the time Why Not beat down the Cramorant and Drizzle, the Silicobra didn't need to do much damage to take me out. The only way to continue to survive would be to charm it so Why Not can bide time and heal with leftovers. This put me in an unfortunate scenario once I took the Silicobra down though, as I would have very little counter power points left and I would most likely be paralyzed. Toxel could then use Acid and lower Why Not's special defense if my luck was particularly bad. After an hour or so of attempts, I got better luck with the HP management and was left with a few counters for Toxel, winning the battle and clearing the route to Gym 4. The Gym mission to B was pretty uneventful and the fights were quite easy as well. The Gym leader also proved to be easy and only took a couple of tries and three level ups to win. The only real strategy to note is to keep countering and charm the Surfetch down so you can heal up with leftovers before battling Gigantamax Machamp. Making the way to the 5th gym is trivial as the only required battle at Glibwood Tangle doesn't trigger if you only have one Pokemon in your team. The 5th gym challenge has us battling trainers while answering questions. There's no strategy here, honestly they can't do much damage to why not so clear them normally. Opal as well turns out to be a breeze of a gym leader and one of the two gym leaders I didn't need a retry on. If you set up Amnesia early on to raise your special defense, even the max moves won't deal much damage to why not. Of course, it wouldn't be a challenge without a struggle, and in the path of Gym 6 is Hop once again. Naturally, the first Pokemon he brings out is Trevenant. We learned earlier that Counter doesn't work on ghost types, and this Trevenant just happens to only have physical moves. After losing, I realized this battle would be a battle of stats and needed to reset my EVs and change natures. I had enough mints left over from my earlier farming to get what I needed, but EVs were another story. At this point in the game, the water bike isn't unlocked yet, so the only option is to farm a single berry tree hoping for the right berries to clear Why Not's EVs. After that, I needed to rebuild, but I didn't want to spend a few more hours making the species on Route 1 extinct. Instead, I spent 12 hours manually raid resetting on a single den to build up enough watts to fund the dojo. Normally this would take less time, but since the game isn't beaten yet, the maximum amount of watts you can get for clicking on a raid den is 300. Once you beat the game, this changes to 2000 per den. Knowing that I'd already needed to reset my EVs, and the fights were only going to get harder, this was the better route. You see, when you donate 400,000 watts to the dojo, you get a vending machine where you can buy vitamins. These vitamins give 10 EVs on a specific stat and would make changing stats much easier throughout the rest of the run. Back to the hop fight. I now had the defense and HP to stall out the Trevenant, but I kept getting crit and KO'd. After a significant amount of retries, I was finally able to take the Trevenant down, and once I did, I beat the rest of the team on my first attempt. The rest of the route to Gym 6 is pretty easy overall, only needing to resort to Encore for one trainer. Progress was going well. The last two Gym challenges had been cleared easily and the Gym 6 challenge was the same. Gordy was the second Gym leader I took down on my first try and I was starting to get confident in my ability to complete this run. But then Hop showed up once again. This battle was unlike anything I had encountered so far. The fight had weather, specifically Hell. And not only did it have hell, it was permanent, meaning leftovers recovery was negated. 
You also cannot progress in the game until you win this fight. I couldn't really simulate this as showdown, and I lost over and over and over even trying other held items. To make matters worse, leveling up more meant I took more hits to take down opposing Pokémon, and this actually made the fight harder. But this channel is not one where we give up so easily. I sat down and ran every turn manually through a calculator online and summed up the individual stat totals I would need to win. Not only would I need specific stat totals, but I would need luck. Here were the stats I needed to win. Any more defense or HP would mess it up, though more speed wouldn't hurt. Now for the battle strategy, which relies on the opponent making very specific plays and almost any deviation means a reset or loss. When you start the battle, you must have the double go for defense curl or growl. Encore the double on turn 2 and keep it using the same move so that Hell almost takes it out. Charm it one time and then use Amnesia on the other turns to ensure you have the right amount of power points for the rest of the fight. After the fourth encore wears off, use counter and it should go for takedown. You'll deal just enough damage to take it out. Hop will send Snorlax out next. You should go for Crunch and it'll take two counters to KO him with the hell damage. The specific defense and HP stat I used ensures a KO even if he low rolls, but doesn't give much room for error. If Crunch lowers your special defense, reset. Inteleon will come out next. Click on Encore and hope he clicks Sucker Punch. Once it's locked in to Sucker Punch, charm one time only. I got extremely lucky and Inteleon clicked Tearful Luck after Encore ran out. I managed to trap him again and the hell damage took over half his HP. Once the Encore ends, Inteleon should attack and this time we click Counter, taking him down. Corviknight is Pokemon number 4. Corviknight should go for Scary Face due to you outspeeding it. Without this turn of hell damage, we have too much defense to hit Corviknight and wouldn't have enough HP left for the last Pokemon. After the hell chip, two turns of Drill Peg should take him down even if it low rolls against you. Pin Kirchen is the final Pokemon and it should lead with Curse. Click Encore and use Charm while it's forced to Curse since we want it dealing as little to us as we can. Once Encore is over, it'll switch to Spark. You have very little room for error, but somehow I got away with getting paralyzed. Spark left Why Not with 1 HP and dealt back just enough to KO Pin Kirchen, ending the over 10 hour struggle with this fight. One thing to note about my strategy here, Hop actually has a potion, and if he uses it, he can deal substantially more damage to you over the fight. So my goal was to minimize the total damage he dealt and prevent him from using the potion to heal up and get more turns. The next leg of the game leads us towards Gym 7, and after a brief encounter with Team Yell, unlocks the Water Pike. Most of the trainers on this route can be avoided, except Marnie, who went down on the first attempt. The Gym Challenge for Gym 7 is a bit different than the others, and Team Yell refuses to let you enter unless you have more than one Pokémon in your party. After thinking about my route forward, I decided I would breed a second level 1 Why Not and put him on my team. If it contributed to battle at all, or leveled up, I would reset and retry. But it wound up that chat discovered we could just remove the second Why Not from the team after getting past the guard. The actual battles in the gym challenge were quite easy and went smoothly until the last one, where they wouldn't let us fight unless we had two Pokémon. So reluctantly, I put the level 1 Why Not back on the team and abided by the original rules I had set and cleared the battle easily. Piers was a dark gym leader, and Why Not is a psychic Pokémon. Unbeknownst to chat, I had worked with Selux offline to develop a strat for Piers, and I ran a poll to see if they thought I could beat him first try. Naturally, chat decided I was going to lose, and then my first attempt started. I didn't need to redo my stats since I had done them for the hop fight, and my main requirement was having a speed of about 79. I would have cleared this one on my first attempt, but I wasn't paying full attention and got hit by a Toxic, losing the bet with my chat. I lost a few more tries, but was successful pretty quickly. The fight itself is simple. Literally, only click counter until you get to the Skun Tank. Then for Skun Tank, use Safeguard and Charm to keep yourself alive while you slowly whittle down his HP. Piers was a significantly easier fight than I originally anticipated. After Piers, there's only one badge left to get. Travel back to Hammerlock and enter the Gym Challenge. Unfortunately, everything in this gym is a double battle and requires two Pokémon, so once again our second Why Not will make a return with the same rules as earlier. If it contributes or levels, reload the previous save. The Gym Challenge trainers proved quite easy with no special strategy, but Raihan definitely needed some planning. Raihan starts with Gigalith and Flygon, but in double battles we can only counter or mirror coat the slower opposing Pokémon. Flygon is quite fast and will be on the field most of the battle, so charm it down to the lowest attack you can before taking out Gigalith. Sandaconda comes in next and will almost always protect on turn 1 and every other turn, letting Why Not get some damage in on the Flygon. On the turns it doesn't protect, we can lower its attack with Charm and use Amnesia to raise our special defense. Eventually the Flygon will run out of power points on Crunch and after 10 minutes of stalling, Leftover should heal us back to full before taking it down. Once Flygon is down, that's pretty much the whole fight. Duraludon doesn't do much damage to us and the Sandaconda is running low on moves at this point. 
After cleaning up both, the gym challenge is complete, beginning the final phase of this run. The pathway to the final city is trivial and presents no real issues, letting us start the Champion Cup. Our first opponent is Marnie, who, up until this point, hasn't really given me a challenge. Oh, how I underestimated this fight. I really didn't want to run to level 100, but Marnie left me no choice. After many defeats and quite a lengthy strategizing session, I came up with this stat spread. Which, by no means guaranteed a win, but left me with a strategy that had potential. I went back in and proceeded to get destroyed over and over. One of the most annoying things about this fight was the first Pokémon, Lifert Head Torment. Not only was I having issues surviving, but with so many Pokémon that were hard to take out, I was running out of power points. So I completely redid my stats again, coming up with a new strategy, and spent hours hunting around the Olive Armor for Armorite Ore. Which, if you trade in four of them to the Cramomatic, you get a power point up, letting me max out all my moves. So how did this new strategy work after 15 hours of getting destroyed by Marnie and rebuilding my Why Not? Well, I continued to get destroyed for another few hours. If I'm known for anything, it's being stubborn, and during this battle, my stubbornness paid off. Pokemon 1 is Lightbird. Raise up your special defense with Amnesia and charm it to lower attack. Why not will always get tormented within the first two turns, and to make things worse, Lightbird only has special moves, which, because it's dark, we can't Maricode. The only way through is to stall it out until it struggles to zero HP. And before it does, Marnie should opt to use her full restore. After stalling, set up Safeguard on the last turn before Lightbird faints. Scrafty comes in next. It's a coin toss, but if you click counter when it clicks across, it should be a one-hit KO. If you lose Safeguard before Toxicroak comes in, it's normally game over. However, due to a recommendation from my moderator Rocky, I had maxed the happiness for Why Not before this battle and managed to shake off Toxic, to which it just poisoned me again before I got Safeguard up. But with some divine luck, it shook it off a second time. Once Toxicroak is down, the real fight begins. From this point, it's a race against time to heal up to full. Charm the more Peko to minimum attack and try to stall until you heal. After stalling, you should be left with at least two uses of counter. If you only have one left, or your HP isn't mostly full, it's game over. Once Grimmsnarl comes out, you're forced to struggle or use something other than counter depending on what moves you have left. I got insanely lucky and Grimmsnarl used Max Starfall instead of Max Darkness on turn 1. On turn 2, I had the ability to use counter and G-Max Snooze does so much to why not that you're basically guaranteed to one-hit it. This was one of the hardest fights of the run and took me over a month to clear it. After the nightmare of a battle with Marnie was over, the rest of the in-game stuff went pretty easy. The next battle with Hop I beat first try. Just amnesia up and the rest is simple. Next is the Cosmos Trainer's interruption, leading to a fight with Oleana. None of these fights are really an issue and even Oleana only required a retry and a couple of speed EVs to prevent getting hit by Toxic. Back into the Champion Cup, and I cleared out B, Nessa, B, and Raihan all on my first try. I really expected this section to be much harder, so it was kinda disappointing. You might think the Rose and Eternatus interruption would have been difficult, but I didn't need to rebuild Why Not, and only needed one retry on Rose. After the events with the Legendaries, there was only one thing left. Defeat Leon. Now let me say up front, I never expected Leon to be easy. But for a brief moment, I really thought I was stuck and had no option to win without evolving Why Not. Going into the run, I left the challenge text on my layout to say Why Not slash Wobbuffet as I thought I might need to evolve for this final section. But after coming so far, I really didn't want to evolve for a single battle. Just like with the other hard battles, I rebuilt Why Not stats again and wrote a turn-by-turn -turn plan for winning. It took me a significant number of retries, but in the end, I managed to do the whole run without ever evolving Why Not. Starting with his first Pokemon, the problem was being able to tank all the damage. Aegislash has a chance of using King's Shield on turn 1, and if it doesn't, that means the battle's over already. However, if you get one Amnesia up and the Aegislash rolls fairly high with a Shadow Ball, you can Oko it and have a potential to win. Dragapult is the next Pokemon, and two Miracotes takes it down. Haxorus does a large amount of damage, letting us one-shot it with Counter. Cinderace is next, the fourth heavy hitter in a row. If it uses Pyro Ball multiple times right away, there's no way to survive. However, if it doesn't and you get three charms up, why not can start to heal on turns that Cinderace doesn't use Pyro Ball. Stall it out until you get up to full health to get to Pokemon number 5. This is the next RNG roll we need to beat. In order to survive the first bit, I couldn't allocate enough stats and speed to outspeed Seismitoad. Normally it goes for a Toxic, but in this attempt it didn't. According to my napkin math, the fight is still winnable even if you get hit by Toxic, but it definitely makes it a lot harder. The last Pokemon Leon has, Charizard, usually goes for Max Wildfire, and my original strat accounted for that too. But it totally avoided it in this attempt. 
Leon threw this encounter and never clicked G-Max Wildfire and even set Grazi Terrain which healed Why Not and not Charizard. Outside of the Gigantamax form, it basically can't touch Why Not when Amnesia has boosted its special defense so much. After clicking Miracode a few times, the run was over. It took me nearly as many attempts to beat Leon as it did for me to beat Marnie, and at times I really thought this run might not be doable with only a Why Not. But after having an awesome chat that helped with strategizing and a significant amount of patience and determination, the conclusion is yes. You can in fact beat Pokemon Sword with only a Why Not and not Dynamaxing. This run took around 4 months to beat and over 200 hours in game. If you enjoyed it, consider liking, subscribing, or checking out my Twitch where I stream all of my runs live. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you guys in the next Out of the Box Challenge.